three dots so that you can rename uh, the name of your Zoom handle. When you hover your mouse onto your name, there you see three dots to the right. Click on that and uh, you'll have an option to rename yourself. All right. Before even beginning the session, let me ask all of you a question, right? And I'll give you a place where you can uh, tell me your answer. Um, I have... Just a second. Uh, I didn't listen to the proper uh, question. Can you uh, repeat again? Yes, yes, yes. No, no, I'll, I'll just give you just a second. I have given you a link on the comment box. Please click on the link and that will lead you to a platform. Please click on the link and that, that would have led you to a platform. And if this one is the question, are you able to see my slide? You are going to meet your supervisor or your client in about an hour to receive feedback. Right. Your thoughts would be, and this is where you, okay, you're already doing this. Yes, negative, neutral, or positive. This is an anonymous uh, poll, so you have to be candid. This is an anon anonymous poll. No one will know who has voted for what. Okay, I'm expecting more honesty. Can I say that? Just before going to meet your supervisor or client or somebody uh, to receive feedback, a meeting or a call, your state of mind would be negative, neutral, or positive. Can I expect more responses, please? Yeah, get that. Yes. I'm just waiting for the negative thing to grow longer. Am I being too pessimistic? We are expecting something. Isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I just hope all of you have voted. The people who voted for positive, I'm so glad you are there on the session. And the ones that have uh, voted neutral, uh, I can understand. And the ones that have voted negative, I'm with you. I can't say more than that. Let's uh, get uh, forward to understand, you know, what is there in this. Are you able to check my PPT? Can somebody give me feedback? Yep, we can yes. see that. You're able to see this guy who's holding his head. I'm going to meet him as a supervisor. Yes, yes. The statistics say only 17% of millennials, you know, the <clears throat> generation, the young generation, they report receiving meaningful feedback. And surprisingly, only 14.5% only 14.5% of the managers, they say they're good at giving feedback. You think these numbers are surprising? Now, what is this meaningful feedback? What does this word mean? What is meaningful feedback? I just said feedback and now this uh, slide says meaningful feedback. What is that? What do you think that would be? Constructive feedback. What is constructive feedback? Uh, I'm, so, so giving a feedback in a way which would actually help the employee or the uh -huh. resource to better himself rather than going the other way around. Awesome. Yeah, but one should have, one should have uh, listened properly. That's how that will be. Properly, right? right. You mean to say uh, the receiver has to receive it properly? Yeah, that, that's how they're going to give meaningful feedback otherwise. It, it's, uh, it's actually both ways. It right. works both ways, actually. 
it works both ways right. but the meaning of meaningful feedback like you said is exactly that the kind of feedback that helps individuals learn grow and do their jobs better and eventually it improves productivity and performance unfortunately only 17% of millennials report receiving meaningful feedback and only less than 15% of managers say they're good at giving feedback effectively are these numbers alarming no yeah definitely <laughs> they are alarming yes, yes. yeah they because are they are alarming. Alarming. yeah and there's another status there's another you know set of numbers that i'd like to show you uh, feedback also is known to engage employees well you know the people who strongly agreed to the idea that they received meaningful feedback just last week 84% of them said they are engaged and those people who did not receive meaningful feedback or those who received some feedback that is not meaningful they said only 22% of such kind have been engaged at work so these statistics show us that great feedback on a weekly basis is required for engaging employees um so yes and that's the reason we have this session today not just these numbers these numbers are just a very few months old you know the slide also shows you the date on which uh, the data has been curated it's 2021 roughly i'll show you somebody else so you all remember this person any idea who this person is go back to your school days abid sorry abida any other guesses Kabir anybody, yeah. <laughs> anybody remembers Kabir Das ke dohe? Yes, yes. Remembers <laughs> reading? Yeah. What did Kabir Das uh, tell us about Nindak? Anybody remembers that doha? Negative. Keep okay. away from yourself from negative person. Okay. Keep yourself away from negative people. Okay. Any other guesses? Nindak niyare rakhi. Keep ah, lovely. Can you please complete the Doha for us? It, it seems it's written over. Nindak niere rakhi, angan koti chawai. You are able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Oh God. Okay. Yes, That's... the slide notes are uh, are shown here. Uh, all the three screens. I'll, yes. I'll, Next I'll... animation in the previous. Uh, just a second. Give it a right click and hide the slide notes. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yes, can you please complete it for us? Anybody, if you remember, or if you think you want to Google and bring it out, I'm fine with that. B before I fix my screen. All right. This is good now, right? yeah it's fine yes so well kabir das just said this if anybody can give me the meaning of this one keep you uh, keep uh, the people who criticize you close to you okay and uh, keep a sh uh, shade in your uh, lovely in your house probably and uh -huh. without the soap and basically without soap and water pani yeah. sabun yes yes you did this clean yourself <laughs> yes the critics cleanse your character without soap and water so keep them close to you is what kabir das said would you want to agree disagree to what kabir das said yeah. exactly yes on that note i welcome all of you all to this session on giving and receiving feedback right uh, we're going to see how we can simplify feedback inside a corporate environment and understanding the challenges in giving and receiving feedback uh, making a feedback a two way conversation more than anything else and a few best practices adopted by a few successful organizations triggers which um, make us or you know block us from receiving feedback well reviewing the feedback after we receive it what is good feedback and what is bad feedback look like these are the contents of today's session 
And let me ask you one more question, even before we get into the session. What makes feedback a challenging process? What do you think makes feedback challenging? If you complete, if, if you have complete something, uh, and you want to ask uh, whether somebody wants to give or not, that 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 would be a biggest challenge. Okay, right, right. I totally agree. Anybody else? So actually, if it is a, I mean, if it is a positive side of a feedback, then that's fine. But if it's okay. negative side of feedback, we don't know how the mind takes on the other side. Right. It's the art of um, giving a negative feedback without offending the other person. Right. Right. All of you are right. Regardless of, you know, who presents the feedback, there are perceptual barriers you know, that these communications must pass through the barriers. All of you just mentioned specific barriers. These barriers act as filters, you know, that can affect the actual message that has to go through, that has to be heard by the receiver. His or her own perceptual filters that uh, color the feedback they receive. You know, what determines a, pers a person's perceptual filters for receiving feedback? What do you think determines a person's perceptual filter? How they are going to take the... Uh, it differs take, uh, from person to person. Yes, yes, right? Yes, yes. There's, there's not a single answer for that. To give you, or, you know, to simplify, let's, let's assume, you know, uh, uh, let's say some, some, some random, what name shall I take? Um, um, I'll take my own name, some random Madhuri, another, another Madhuri in another world, thinks that her boss doesn't like her. And if that boss comes and gives feedback to her, what does she think? What's the first thing that strikes her mind? Negative feedback. Yeah. My boss gave me this kind of a feedback. She said, I'm not doing well on this project just because she doesn't like me. Yes or no? Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the probability is high that a person, you know, perceives it that way. And this person will rationalize the superior's, uh, so the, the superior's feedback through the perceptual filter by saying, she doesn't like me. And so he or she has given me bad feedback. That's it. So these barriers are some things that have to be overlooked, that have to be erased. We'll go and find out a method through which we can, if not completely try, uh, you know, and at least to an extent erase uh, uh, such barriers, right? This is a beautiful matrix. The first one, quadrant A, is what the giver said. And the second one is what the receiver heard, right? Let me uh, take you through. Let's say, I don't think you are reaching your full potential on this job. This is what the giver said. What do you think the receiver would have heard? You did not do your complete job. You are not up to the mark. Yes. As simple as that. You think that I'm not doing a good job. And the unfortunate thing here is most feedback sessions stop at this line, stop at this level. Yes or no? You agree, disagree? Correct. You say something and he or she understands something and we close it. There is no further probing. There is no further conversation. Oh, yes, I have given what I had to give and I do not care what he received. But if we further slightly, you know, dig deeper and ask, well, what do you think about this? Or, you know, what do you think uh, about what you, what I just said? And that is when you will provide the receiver with an opportunity to tell what he feels, right? And then you can clarify what you actually meant. This is what you meant. The one who gives. <laughs> yeah? It might not always be true. I might, uh, you know, uh, be too maybe polite or too polished. But yeah, there are people who provide really great feedback. And if you're not still in this range, I think all of us have to adopt 
<laughs> giving a feedback that can be called meaningful feedback. And let me remind you, we have seen what meaningful feedback in slide number one, what meaningful feedback is on slide number one, right? So yes, and then the receiver will feel in this way. I can churn better results than what I'm achieving now. Fortunately, there is not one route to, you know, accessing this matrix. You can start from anywhere and end anywhere, right? But you have to do this conversation every time you sit for feedback. I say something, you hear something, tata bye bye. That is not where we're going to end. You can just further probe and what do you think is something that you can ask the receiver? Or what do you think you're going to do? Or, you know, what do you think, uh, uh, where do you think you need to act upon? Or what do you think you need to act upon? One, just one more question to elicit his response and to see whether you both are on the same page. So this one is heard, uh, sorry, said, heard, meant, felt matrix. <laughs> if you think, uh, if, if you think this one is going to help you in your performance reviews, you can happily use it. <laughs> I'm not the creator of this matrix, you can happily use this and you can see whether this one works out for you or not, right? Let's go forward and understand a few uh, feedback practices adopted by few organizations. What do you think is uh, the owner of this logo? Who do you think is the owner of this logo? Netflix. Netflix, Netflix. yes, we all love Netflix. Netflix currently is going through a really bad crisis. You're aware of it? Not so much. In the re in the recent statistics, they've published that they have lost to close uh, to about two lakh subscribers and all of that. Yes, yes. Uh, they have been losing the subscribers very yes. lately, and uh, most of the uh, like incoming uh, like the data sources are also very limited for them. So they're trying for an alternative sources. Right, right. This is not the first time Netflix is going through such crisis. The same thing happened even during the 2008 dot-com bubble burst. And they successfully came out of it. And all the experiences that led to Netflix's success, the CEO, anybody knows the name? Reed Hastings. He has authored a book called No Rules Rules. Anybody read the book, heard of the book? No Rules Rules is the book written by the CEO of Netflix. Uh, and he has put seven leadership lessons that they have learned out of their failure and the way to success. Out of all the seven lessons, any guesses about what the first lesson was? Accepting the feedback. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Offer feedback anytime, anywhere. This is what the guy says, the CEO, right? Most people are usually reluctant to give constructive criticism to their colleagues, especially the people above uh, in the hierarchy. Why? Why do you think so? <laughs> Even if the feedback is well-intentioned, you know, people worry, you know, before giving criticism. Why? Why do you think so? Simple reason. He's saying coming from some someone above me or uh... anybody to anybody for that matter. They might take it negative. That's yeah. why. Yes, and they might, they might they might perceive us wrongly. They might think we are rude. They might think we are harsh, and that's the reason why we do not usually like giving constructive criticism. Right. I'll tell you what exactly happened uh, inside Netflix. Uh, so this this incident was put in the book, actually. Uh, let's call somebody Rose, uh, a VP on Netflix's global communication team, met with her colleagues to present her publicity plan for the launch of the second season of 13 Reasons Why. You know, anybody watch that one? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, she proposed Netflix fund an independent study with the researchers to look at the impact the series has on teenage viewers, right? And this could help them better position the show, to position the show better. They were do, doing some kind of research. And, you know, during the presentation, uh, the colleagues, they didn't like her idea 
of you know this uh, the Netflix fund and you know going for an independent study and all of that. They quite didn't like the idea, and they had a lot of questions. Uh, as more objections were raised, you know, this lady, she started speaking faster and tried closing the presentation in a faster pace. And then everybody in the room started getting frustrated, right? And she didn't stop. She rushed through the slides even more. And then uh, one uh, good colleague of hers, Bianca, waved her arms and she said, uh, hey, Rose, we must slow down a little bit and take the concerns. And then suddenly this lady, she stopped and had uh, a sip of water and then slowed down, uh, took a few deep breaths, and then she started taking concerns. And then the energy of the room was totally reconstructed. There was no frustration as they started taking question after question, they started clarifying question after question. And after the session was over, what do you think happened? Rose walked up to Bianca and thanked her for stopping her midway through the presentation. There was no fight between them. That is the culture, that is the kind of culture Netflix breathes inside its organization. You like it, you dislike it, you think it's all fictional. <laughs> Your comments. Possibly. Um, I mean, uh, if you probably look at organizations like Google and Facebook, they they hire people like that. Yes. yes. During the interview process itself, they, they ensure that they are actually hiring like-minded uh, people. Lovely. So they, what you said is absolutely even if in the interview it doesn't come uh, it will come in the education right or in the daily day to day interaction right right and candid feedback yes what all of you said makes a lot of sense candid feedback is something netflix promotes and when uh, somebody says candid feedback it is not just uh, you know speaking your mind without any concern for how it will impact others it's not that. Candid feedback is not that. It requires that, you know, every, everybody thinks carefully about what they're telling them and how that is going to help improve performance. This requires a lot of preparation and planning. It just does not come like that. And that is exactly what happens inside Netflix. And they have a framework to do this. And that is called as the 4A framework. The one, the side in blue is the giver's side and the side in green is the recipient's side, right? Aim to assist. You have to have positive intent. The intent of helping, coaching, and you know, adding to the growth, right? That is aiming to assist. And the next one, it has to be actionable. You have to specify a clear action items. You know, for example, uh, somebody has a habit of biting nails, right? And all these calls, let's say, are video calls. Please, uh, you know, when, when you bite nails, it's irritating. Is that assisting the person in any way? How can you change it? It's okay to be wrong, but please, please, uh, you know, try. You need not be politically correct inside LC sessions. <laughs> uh, by uh, doing practice of it, to not to bite nails in front of others. Okay, well tried. Can I invite yeah. one more response? Yeah, for that, instead of calling out the person name, uh, try to highlight the problem. Mm -hmm. Keep him engaged or involved in the conversation. Right, right. Or maybe try and find the root cause as to why he's fighting this. Is it because of anxiety or anything else? Okay. You will try finding the root cause. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, that, if that is a problem. Right. Uh, I mean, or, or we can distract. Right, right. But you're not giving feedback at all. <laughs> or talk to him personally and like uh, uh, suggest in a polite way. Yeah. If you stop, uh, you know, biting nails, it will look more professional. Or, in, or, you know, in order to look more professional, you need to take care of keeping your fingers away from your face. Something like that. I know I'm trying to be too ideal, but yeah, I'm trying to make all the statements positive. Right? As simple as that. And actionable. Let me give you one more example here. 
um, for myself, let us say. In your uh, presentations, I think uh, a lot of responses are coming from men. Is that good feedback? It's a biased feedback. Uh, it obviously means that, you know, all my presentations or all my uh, um, sessions are biased slightly towards men. And that feedback has to be given to me. And how, how, how will you put it uh, in, a, in a more actionable way? Can you make the presentation which is appealing to all, all the genders? Yeah, gender neutral. Please involve uh, examples that are gender neutral. Or, you know, please have contexts that are gender neutral. And please is also an extra word. You need not say please uh, in every feedback. Please is only sugarcoating it and you need not sugarcoat. Try and involve a lot of examples which are gender neutral. So I can invite a lot of responses from both men and women. Yeah, that's, that's somehow you, uh, that, that's how you kind of make your feedback actionable. And coming to the receiving side, it's actually here where it gets really difficult. Why is it difficult to appreciate feedback? Can I have your responses here? The receiver might already be thinking that he does everything, that he's been given feedback. But the mindset <laughs> is not proper in that case. Right. We have a natural mechanism called fight or flight. When somebody starts telling something, uh, you know, we have to improve on something or we have to do something in a better fashion, we either want to fly away or we want to fight with them. That's the natural response. And once we understand that it's a natural response, we will start dealing with that in a better fashion. You need not succumb to the flight or fight response. You can just nod your head, listen to him or her completely and just say thank you for the feedback. Right? That's possible. Is that possible? Not possible. Possible. But if there is no action taken after nodding head by the feedback taker, is it worth? What action, what action do you think the feedback taker has to do? If they are all in the right mindset, uh, they should go back and think about the feedback given and taken. Right. And act accordingly. But that is not the actual scenario, right? And that's why we are all in this <laughs> session. That's right. We'll see, uh, you know, how to better receive feedback in the future slides. It's going to get deeper about that. <laughs> Thank you for bringing up that point. And this 4A framework, let me remind one more time that this is specific to Netflix. And in Netflix, the employees have every right to either accept or discard the feedback that they're receiving. Is it nice to give the recipient that freedom? What do you think your thoughts are? Yeah, I think it should be. Yeah, you think it's a good idea to give them the freedom to accept or discard the feedback that they're getting? Yeah, because yeah. if you say yes. even yes. Yes. you already said it, right? We should take so the yes. yeah. Right. Only when we give them that freedom, I think, uh, the the feedback gets more objective. Otherwise, anybody can give feedback in, in a way they like about any random thing under the sun. That feedback will definitely tell the giver to be more objective. Yeah. Because he or she, for a, matter, for a matter of fact, knows that the recipient will discard it if it's not relevant. Yes or no? Yeah. Unless no one I mean, said anything, uh, it was good for both of us. Uh, I mean, could you please, yeah, sorry. Unless he didn't say anything and he, he won't be able to understand whether what whatever he, uh, whatever that was in the mind, that should be at least sayable, right? Right. Are we planning yes. to get this framework into Valinus? Sorry, could you please uh, repeat? Yeah, are we planning to on getting this uh, framework into Valley Labs by any chance? <laughs> that is there completely in the hands of the decision makers. If you want to independently follow this, you can by giving all due credits to Netflix and the book from which we have gotten this uh, framework. I'll uh, share with you the source. Yeah, you but, can... we, but we don't have the flexibility or the freedom to discard feedback. You can. It all depends on the relationship you have with the person that's giving the feedback. 
And that exactly. is also, I'm going to add this, that also in the next few, few slides. It doesn't, the have relationship, to be officially, it doesn't have to be officially available. You can always officially. Uh, I cannot comment really on that because official is a big thing for me now. This is available in a book that is publicly you know, released and we are giving due credits to the book. <laughs> so you, if you think you like this, if you think this uh, mechanism will help your team and yourself grow, you can happily use it. Why? What's wrong in that? <laughs> yeah, as simple as that. Please allow me to go forward now. Yeah, One more sure. thing. I all due credits to Netflix. They use this uh, framework also. And this happens uh, once every annum. Annually, this happens. Anybody inside the organization can give feedback to anybody. Stop, start, and continue. Only with respect to the goals they have, the objectives that they have. What is something that they need to start doing? What is something that they need to stop doing? And what is something that they must continue doing? I'll give you a quick example. For example, all of us have been working from home from a very long time. And, you know, I'm sure all of us, uh, some most of us, <laughs> I'm not trying to fat shame anybody, but yeah, I have put on a lot of kilos. So let me at least fat shame myself. So if I want to uh, achieve an ideal weight, I think I will start including a lot of protein in my diet and stop sitting for longer hours and continue drinking a lot of water. That's how uh, I'll apply it to my personal life. And any one of you uh, can give me a response either uh, in a you know professional context or in a personal context. Can I invite one response? Start, stop and continue. Anybody? If you don't want to tell it publicly, at least tell yourself. So you will register the formula in your mind. And you can happily go around and tell people this. Stop and when you music, tell... Uh, I mean, stop going... Yeah. Sorry. Please continue. Stop. Yeah. And when you tell somebody this, you should as well be willing and ready to receive the same from them or from somebody else. That's the funda. Right? Yeah. Let me go forward. And I'm sure uh, all of you, at least some of you would have tried telling yourself the start, stop, continue uh, uh, formula. And... Uh, let me tell you one more uh, style of giving feedback. What do you remember when you see this little guy? Oh, what? Sorry? Toy Story. Toy Story, yes. Woody. Uh, so when you say Toy Story, which, from whom do you remember? Disney. Pixar. Yeah, Pixar. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Anybody knows the story of Pixar? Yes. It's been published by, uh, sorry, it's been officially published by Steve Jobs. Ah, right. In the late 1980s, you know, Steve Jobs acquired yeah. a small when company, he left a startup. Apple. Yeah, when he left Apple. Apple, yes. It. And it was later named as Pixar. No one on the planet at that point knew that, you know, it would become an extraordinary success. By 2015, I believe, Pixar's creators had created and produced uh, to about 15 films that won a lot of major awards, more than 200 plus major awards, and that did not happen by accident. Pixar also had to struggle like most startups. Anybody knows the story? A big factor in this company's success was they adopted a simple solution to get all the people working inside Pixar collaborate with one another. Any guesses what this strategy was? What the solution was? They named it plussing. Anybody heard of this word plussing? Any guesses as to what plussing would be? Solve problems or maybe to solve each other or maybe everyone's problem. Okay. Let me give you... Yeah, collaboration means yeah. basically if something which is uh, which is relatively uh, which is relatively profitable for both of us, 
or maybe for the collaboration basically right right you're very close actually let me give you the actual meaning the general guideline is you can criticize an idea only if you can add a constructive suggestion that is plusing uh, and plusing would happen in every meeting that happened at pixar every other meeting you all know how animation industry works uh, any anybody from the animation team i know there's animation team inside value labs well anyway when pixar makes uh, animated films you know dozens of animators collaborate and each animator is assigned uh, like um one or two scenes at a time and one scene let us say of 4 seconds requires about 100 frames and uh, an average animator or let us say a decent animator can produce uh, those 100 frames in one week's time which is about 20 frames in a day right uh and each day the draft work is fed into the the system the central system and all the other colleagues they can review it right so they collaborate and they critic and they follow the thing the method plusing only if you can give a constructive suggestion you can criticize an idea how do you like it and these are the three steps that pixar followed uh, in plusing accepting all offers in simple words it is listen you have to listen you have to listen and listen no, not do anything else and after listening you can say yes followed by and not yes but if you say yes but that's it you killed his spirit his or her spirit but if you say yes and you are giving him or her some hope right and the next one is to make your partner look good let me help you uh, with an example oh, the example is already there on the slide i like woody's eyes this is making the partner look good and the next part is structuring the debate what if his eyes rolled left right you like the eyes but you want the direction to be something else and then the person who is designed will have an opportunity to tell you why he put the eyes that way and not towards left and then you can tell him or her why you want the eyes to be left is the debate healthy or you think it's ah no headache <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what plusing is all about and this is exactly what happens inside pixar so yes one more technique of giving constructive criticism let's go forward let's now enter receiving feedback we have seen that perceptual barriers are something that makes giving feedback a difficult bet right so what do you think blocks us from receiving feedback the feedback is wrong the feedback is unfair the feedback is unhelpful you question the truth behind the feedback yes or no yes yes you know we have to understand that there are three things one is appreciation and the other one is coaching and the other one is evaluation how are these three different what is appreciation what is coaching and what is feedback sorry what is evaluation appreciation means if we done anything for example if we are done any poc or whatever the assigned task so uh, they are giving some good appreciation so right. those are right and coaching means if we are struggling somewhere ah so super if we block somewhere they can guide them they Lovely. can support and Lovely. evaluate if i done something and i don't know whether it is right or wrong so i can ask with somebody self whether it is right or wrong they can awesome. evaluate it awesome awesome lovely you have nailed it you have nailed it let me simply paraphrase appreciating is thanking somebody for doing something or telling somebody that they have done something well and coaching is telling somebody uh, how you can do something in a better fashion and evaluation is telling people where they stand as simple as that i think it's nice to see appreciation as appreciation coaching as coaching and evaluation as evaluation and if you are giving it's nice not to mix all of them 
do one thing at a time if you're giving and while you're receiving, understand what they are giving you. And if you are giving appreciation where you have to give coaching, that's not a good match. And if you are giving them evaluation where they receive coaching, that's also not a good match. It's with you to identify when you need to appreciate, when you need to coach, and when you need to evaluate, and how to do all of these three using good positive language, right? And the next one in uh, kind of handling these truth triggers is to understand. Oh my God, we know this. All feedback sessions that we have attended so far told us the same. Understand, understand, understand. So what is this understand? How, how do you understand? What is understanding uh, the feedback that somebody is giving you? Anybody? What are they seeing that I cannot see? What exactly are they worried about? What are they recommending? Right? This is understanding. This is not easy. Huh? I'm not just saying that it is easy. I'm saying that we have to do it. And that is understanding. How many of us try understanding the feedback without just saying, oh God, this girl or this boy doesn't like me and so they're giving me bad feedback? Or who the hell is he to give me feedback? This one is the next one. I'm coming slowly to the relationship triggers. And the next one, there's something called blind spot. Anybody understands what is a blind spot? Incorrect judgment. Okay. What is a blind spot? Something which you can't see clearly. Missing parameters. Ah, awesome. Something that you cannot see clearly or cannot see at all. I'll tell you a funny thing about uh, a blind spot, you know. I can definitely see your blind spots, her blind spots, his blind spots, their blind spots, everybody else's blind spots. But I have no blind spots. That's the beauty of blind spots. You get that now? <laughs> we, can clearly, we can clearly not see our own blind spots. And if this feedback falls in the area of blind spot, you will obviously assume it as bullshit. Oh God, I'm not taking this because you're not aware of your blind spot. So please approach somebody who can clarify you or help you see and uh, you know discover your blind spot. That is where truth triggers can be handled. Followed by the next one, relationship triggers. Who the hell are you to give me feedback? What right do you have to give me feedback? How dare you give me feedback? This is a relationship trigger. Anybody? Anybody? Relatable? Not relatable? Yeah, absolutely. Def definitely. <laughs> absolutely. Right? We question everything. You know, we are triggered uh, by the lack of credibility, lack of trustworthiness, and we question their motives, a lot of this. And, you know, here the problem is, um, I'll tell you, we only focus more on who, and we kind of become completely blind to this idea of what, right? Where the reverse will help us. We must turn blind to this thing called who and we must open our eyes and see the what am i making any sense yeah <laughs> right most more often than not it's a wise idea to completely shut down from who there's a popular famous telugu poem which says vinada gun evvaru cheppina for all the non telugu speakers i'm so very sorry <laughs> Anyway, that's one thing. We don't want to switch the track. We want to only focus on what and not who. And the next one, identify the relationship system. If you think there is a scar in the relationship, there is a dent in the relationship, fix that first before going for a feedback. If you think feedback itself is causing the dent, then I can't help it. <laughs> because that should not happen. 
feedback should not cause dents in relationship. Feedback must bring, bring all of us closer. Feedback must help all of us collaborate, not otherwise. So please make sure before giving or receiving feedback, make sure the relationship is plain, simple, not complicated. That's very important. The next one is identity triggers. This identity is uh, our own belief system about who we are and what we are capable of doing, what the future holds for us. All of this is our identity, right? And um, when you identify yourself as something, you are not willing to allow somebody to see you in a different way. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes, because you are very sure of your identity. You believe that you are something. And somebody yeah. else is coming and telling you that you're something else. And it's you have a problem confident. with it. You're yeah. super confident on your skills and abilities and somebody is telling you, coming yes. and telling you that something is off. Here we have to kind of slightly, you know, loosen the belief system and try and let the opposite's opinion sink in and relook at the identity. Can I consider what they're saying? Uh, what is the percentage of truth in what they're saying? Should I really take it? Is that going to help me? Like we go for a second opinion when you have some problem with your health. Similarly, you can go for a second opinion to a peer or to somebody you trust. That's not wrong at all. And the last one, dismantle distortions. I'll tell you a fun, fun thing here. Uh, let's say uh, I'm I'm your boss. I'm not anybody's boss for that matter. I am just assuming to be. Uh, I'll say, hey, hi, listen, uh, tomorrow we have this important meeting with the client. Be on, be on time. And then you're like, what the hell is this lady saying? Am I not uh, going to all the meetings on time? Why did she say come on time? Are Baba, I randomly said let's be on time. I didn't mean in any way that you are late to the meetings on any given day. But we are very happy because uh, uh, all of us are superbly dramatic. <laughs> and we say, when did I not go on time? How dare she said, come on time? What did she mean? And we messed the whole night by not sleeping. And next day, obviously, we'll wake up late and we'll go to the meeting late. <laughs> Am I making sense? That yeah. is distortion. <laughs> Don't simply make your uh, perception be the actual thing. Your perception could be different totally from what the person said. Sometimes even casual things become very big in front of our eyes because that is told by somebody called as a supervisor and that supervisor is above in rank. And you always are not okay with that. That's distortion for us. Don't let the distortion, you know, disfigure the actual feedback or the actual meaning. And the last one is cultivating a growth identity. Yes, in any feedback, in any feedback, um, usually, you know, research says that we have two ways of, uh, you know, um, uh, growing or, you know, the, the, there's this idea of growth mindset and fixed mindset, right? We, uh, all human beings are either in a growth mindset or in a fixed mindset. And nobody can change that. We will either be in a growth mindset or we will either be in a fixed mindset most of the time. But the point here is feedback will help you understand what kind of mindset you are in. Or, you know, feedback will help you move from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset, from being fixed towards growth. And there's a lot of stake at that point. So it's nice if you could use your feedback to cultivate a growth mindset, as simple as that. So do not be um, so close to your own idea of your identity. Be a little flexible and please let the ideas sink in. And you always have the freedom to tell people why you are discarding the feedback that they have given. It's not wrong at all. If you specify, it's okay to discard. If they are not willing to receive, that's their problem, not your problem. That is what blocks us from receiving feedback. And uh, before uh, closing the show, I have a beautiful thing to review feedback, beautiful matrix and this one. When feedback is positive and unexpected, somebody tells you something nice unexpectedly, you have to habituate it. Make that thing a habit and do it more often. And when feedback is positive and feedback is expected, celebrate it. Yeah. And when feedback is 
negative and expected, you have to act on it. Yes. What do other team members think? What is the impact? These are the questions you will ask yourself. And when, when the feedback is negative and unexpected, you have to start exploring it. What is that blind spot? Why am I not able to see it? Here I have an interesting story to tell you. There is this popular um, poet, Telugu film poet called Sirivennela Sita Rama Shastri. Anybody knows him? He recently left to the heavenly abode. Yeah. Most Telugu people would. Yes, yes. And he is at par with um, uh, Gulzar and uh, who's the other guy in Bollywood? The famous Javed. lyricist. Javed. Ja yeah, Zavad Akhtar. Yes, Zavad Akhtar, Gulzar, somebody of that range. I'm not comparing, but to give the non Telugu speakers an idea, I'm just taking names. Initially, when he started writing, he showed his literary work to his friends and they were so uh, surprised and they suggested him to go to films. And then he came all the way from his village to Hyderabad and he started going to the production houses, right? He went, he went to the first production house, he met a producer and he showed him his work and um, the producer said, um, good work, I'll call you, haha. <laughs> and then uh, Sita Ramashastri was so happy and he came home. He waited and waited and waited, but he did not receive a call. And then he went to the second production house. And this time the producer was so happy to see his work. He said, wonderful work. I'll call you. Ha <laughs> ha. And then uh, he came back and this time he was a little skeptical. Oh my God, what is this? And then he went to the third production house. And there he went to the producer. I uh, said, oh, lovely work, my boy. Where are you from? I'm so surprised to see you write such lovely uh, work. Uh, I'll call you, haha. -ha. Again, haha. -ha. And this time, Sita Rama Shastri also said, okay, haha. -ha. And then the producer was like, I know why I said haha. -ha. Why did you say haha? -ha? And then Sita Rama Shastri was like, because I also know why you said haha. -ha. <laughs> okay, tell me, because you're never going to call me. How do you know? And then Sita Rama Shastri said, this is not the first time, sir. Um, I have earlier visited about a dozen production houses. Everybody said, we'll call you later, ha ha, but nobody called me. I said, okay, okay, my boy. And then, sir, can I request you for something? Yes, yes, my boy, please. Sir, please tell me, uh, you all uh, are saying that you like my work, no? Uh, then why are you all not calling me back, sir? What is the problem? And then uh, the producer was kind enough to give him meaningful feedback. Any guesses of what that meaningful feedback would have been? Any guesses? For the too high up, or something? Too Sorry? high to the perception of the general public. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> very close, actually. My boy, you are writing brilliant stuff. You are writing amazing work. But the audience won't be able to relate to you, your work. We want something that sells to the common public, right? S film music has to be on the lines of U Antava, U U Antava, but he writes Vidata Talapuna. <laughs> Am I making sense? <laughs> yeah. So that is when the producer made Sita Ramashastri's day. It was negative, it was unexpected. He started exploring. Oh my God, is my music, is my writing so complicated? So how can I simplify it? How can I write something that the common public can relate to? How can I use simple language? How can I, you know, put it in simple sentences, simple structures? And that is when he became a big hit. And until today, until today, he started, uh, he, he didn't stop writing. And, you know, unfortunately we lost him to cancer and that's a different story. But yeah, his music is going to, uh, you know, remain for a long time. So that's the story of negative and unexpected, how you can explore and how you can change yourself. Uh, so that was one lovely story I wanted to end the session with. And these are a few questions you can ask yourself when you receive each of these kinds of feedback. If you receive something positive that is expected, you can just ask yourself, how can I celebrate this aspect of myself? And something that's unexpected, you can just ask yourself, why was I surprised to hear this? What are those experiences that have caused me to forget? 
to dismiss you know this ability how can i kind of uh, change or work on this one how can i improve and if it is negative and unexpected then you can just say what support do i need to deal with this what plan can i put in place to make some small achievable changes and if it is negative and expected what actions have i already taken to address this concern right what else do i need to do to achieve the results that i want if you ask yourself these questions every time you receive each of these kinds of feedback it's definitely going to help you change or help you implement the feedback in a better way that's all about it these are a few examples your numbers are on the rise which is great but we have noticed you tend to avoid collaborating with your coworkers that said you are also very punctual this sandwich system is not going to work anymore it has to be straight and simple so a good way of delivering is your numbers are on the rise and you are very punctual but we would love to see you collaborate more with your team straight and simple thanks for your time we'll review your progress in 12 months my god 12 months feedback has to be frequent timely thanks for your time we'll talk in a month and review the progress or in a week or in two weeks and review the progress timely feedback is very important your presentations are very confusing we need you to write them better what do you, what is your meaning of confusing my dear i have a different meaning for confusing can you please explain that <laughs> that is a mind voice the presentations are not as clear as the need to be add concrete data and try using bulleted lists plussing the principle of plussing is applied here and yes you are too abrupt during your phone calls you need to change the good way we have received some feedback from clients you are too abrupt on the phone how do you think you can be more approachable or how do you think you can be more you know uh, polite or and soft and positive things like that so these are the changes that we need to do the to do to the language and that said uh, now i want all of you all to agree to this one <laughs> am i forcing feedback is the breakfast of champions and that is why feedback is the breakfast of champions uh, if we have good breakfast we can have a good day similarly if you get feedback every day if you implement it in the right way you can just be as strong at work also and let me also thank the sources this is a beautiful video now there's a ted series by the name the way we work uh, about feedback this is a beautiful video if you have time and interest please watch this and this is the book i have referred to for creating content for this session thanks for the feedback the science and art of receiving feedback well a beautiful book if you have time and interest please go buy it it's available on amazon i'm not the marketing manager but it's really a good book please buy and read it if you like it and because the weekend is up this one is another beautiful movie kung fu panda there is a lot of uh, you know content in this movie about coaching you can definitely implement the lessons about coaching from this movie in the corporate uh, setup so if you have time and interest again please watch this movie over weekend and enjoy yourselves thank you so much for joining the session today and i had so much fun delivering the session to you and i hope i have added some value if you have questions for me i'm happy to take them anybody with questions i i have one yes please sometimes it is better to get harsh i guess what is it you said sometimes it is better to get harsh what what what's my comment about that to 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 give the feedback right. know, i mean at some times you you need to get you know harsh so that uh, 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 the receiver can understand that yeah uh, i mean they, they they'll be able to you know uh, be on the same page that yeah why why i'm so harsh and why i'm i'm, I'm getting rude because of the margin time or maybe right the, let me to get uh, done uh, the work on the time right let me replace the word harsh by using a different word or maybe a slightly positive word that is assertive when you are, when you sound assertive you are telling that person what you are expecting from him or her you know harsh is you use the words that hurt people's uh, minds is it a hurt that you want to cause or is it change that you want to cause hurt or change simple right change 
change. Change, right? Yeah. So when you are harsh, you're definitely going to cause hurt, which is what you don't want. If you're assertive, you're trying to tell them what you're expecting. And if you are sweet enough, you will also tell them how they can uh, help themselves to cause that change. And that is what feedback is all about. And you don't definitely want to damage the relationship you have with your teammates because you're going to work for a long time together. Exactly. <laughs> and by long time, I mean a week or two weeks or a month or two months. Everything is a long time. And you don't want to show and you have to meet each other on a, on a daily basis. Uh, and so, yeah, please avoid being harsh. And if you think the behavior is repeat behavior, that's a different story altogether. Disciplinary action will always be ha harsh. I'm not commenting about that. But a first time feedback or a second time repeat feedback, you can be assertive at the most. Any more questions? All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I had absolute fun and uh, happy weekend, all of you. Please continue joining the learning calendar sessions. We have these sessions happening all through the month. And uh, please nominate yourselves and we'll have fun the same way. Thank you so much and have a nice evening and a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mother. Uh, thank, you. thank you for taking out time despite uh, falling